I went into My Hero Academia's third movie with realistic expectations. Like I was not expecting an Attack on Titan level plot with Monogatari levels writing because that's not what you're going into My Hero Academia's movie for. You're watching My Hero Academia's non-canon movie for one and a half hours of fun. And the first movie was just exceedingly mediocre. I did not enjoy it. The second movie was a lot of fun. And I was expecting most of what I got from the second movie in the third movie as well. I had pretty high expectations with the animation. And after the first 15 minutes, I realized that this movie is an absolute masterpiece of animation. It is so good. Just the sheer quantity of Sakuga is overwhelming. Demon Slayer Mugen Train has less than half of what this movie has in terms of good 2D animation. Well, yeah, that's because in Demon Slayer Mugen Train, the good scenes are animated by like six or seven people in total whereas here there are dozens of incredible sakura animators veterans and young freelancers working together combining to create this incredible movie and it's not just the quantity it's all these consistently high quality sakura like take one of these sequences in the movie and put that in the main tv show and that would be one of the highlights of the entire season. So grab your popcorn, coffee, or dildo. I don't, I don't care how you pass time. I'm not going to judge you. But buckle up, because this is going to be a long one. And this is the animation analysis for My Hero Academia Movie 3, World Heroes Mission. So right off the bat here we have Kota Mori, Kota Mori a relatively young animator I'm guessing animating a really good sequence. The scene where Endeavor just blasts through the door has really cool looking impact frames, very Nakamura inspired impact frames which is something that you'll see me say a lot throughout this video because this movie has a ridiculously high number of Nakamura inspired sequences and immediately you can tell that they're going for something different here because the backgrounds are animated in CGI and we don't really see much of CGI backgrounds in My Hero Academia. Another scene here with Bakugo using his stun grenade. Again, really beautiful impact frames. This cut is also really impressive and Todoroki uses his eyes. The eyes is traveling through the top of the screen because the camera is upside down. Stuff like this would be really difficult if everything was 2D because you'd have to animate the background rotating as well. It's if, it, if you're just panning a hand-drawn illustrated background, it wouldn't look good. So you'll have to animate the background and you'll have to animate it rotating, which is really difficult. Background animation is super difficult. So they can compensate for that by using 3D backgrounds and something Ufotable is good at, something more and more studios are adapting. For example, Mappa did it with Jujutsu Kaisen, albeit in Mappa's case, the CGI background looks fucking terrible. But here, the CGI background looks pretty good because it's movie quality, they have the budget for the CGI, and they have the talent to make sure that the compositing for the 3D and 2D elements are consistent so that it never looks out of place. There's a lot of cuts of this movie on Sakugaburu that just say artists unknown. This might just be because they are in-house Studio Bones animators, or it could just be that they're relatively new animators, in which case it's really difficult to make out their cuts by their style. You'll be able to tell which animator is animating just from the way they draw smears and just from the way their animation is timed. And in this case, the way the bird pops out from his hair is really cool because initially it's just slow, just coming out of his hair, and then it speeds up really quickly. So the timing is really good. Then the bird goes and farts on Deku's face, which is kind of weird. <laughs> It was a funny little scene when I first saw it, but then I got context about the scene and it just became a little bit sus. <laughs> Next we have this scene from Yukina Kosaka, which is overall one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. It's the first time while watching the movie I went, wow, jeez, that was so good. This looks so good. 
The background here is entirely animated in 2D. Everything here is 2D animation and Yukina Kosuka just keeps getting better at 2D animation every time I see him animate. He's another animator who looks up a lot to Yutaka Nakamura and you'll see very similar styles of animation from Kosaka. His most recent cut was the finale of the My Villain Academia arc from season 5 of My Hero Academia and it was so similar to Nakamura's style that I bet most people watching just thought it was Nakamura. He also did that earlier in the season with the Ida clip that everyone thought was again animated by Nakamura which it wasn't, it was animated by Kosaka again. Here, however, it just looks like he's doing his own thing. It doesn't look like anything that's inspired from Nakamura except for the incredible background animation. As far as storyboarding goes, I'd say this is the second best storyboarded scene in this movie because the way the scene flows here is just so good, especially this one cut where Rodi is always in the center of the frame. So since the background is always changing with respect to the foreground character, you can create the illusion of movement. And the background here, brilliant 2D background animation, especially this sequence where he's Rodi's running backwards and he sits on the chair and he rotates with the chair. This is so well storyboarded. I can't even begin to think about how you'd come up with this scene. It reminds me of that scene from Haikyuu where the ball is rotating super fast, but from our POV, the ball is just still and the entire background, the illustration is rotating very fast. It reminds me of that, but here it's not just an illustrated background that's rotating, it's an animated background that's rotating. And it's way more complicated because it's not just a ball in the foreground, it's a character and the character obeys the laws of physics, especially when he hits the ground and his clothes fall over him. This scene is just super cool. Kosaka's scene doesn't end there, it has a little bit more goofy character acting, a bunch of funny faces, just helps with more character building. And just from this one scene, you can tell so much about Rodi's personality. And that's just the power of animation conveying the nature of a character just from animation. Like Akaza from the Demon Slayer movie, you could tell he was a high level martial artist right off the bat from the way he fought and just the stances. You don't need to explain that through words. You can just show it via animation. After this, we have some more humorous character acting sequences by Fumika Araraki, an animator I have never heard of before. So he slash she should be pretty new to the industry and already doing a pretty good job. Of course, they are able to do such a good job because they have Yoshihiko Umakoshi acting as the animation director. Having a solid animation director is just so advantageous. Younger animators get big opportunities to animate and they can animate confidently because even if they screw up a little bit, one of the biggest name veterans in the industry is there to correct your mistakes. We have another, one more scene by Fumika Araraki which is where the layout looks really good. Like we see Deku from a downward point of view here and it looks like it's shot in a wide angle lens. The storyboards and layouts here are also pretty good. Then comes the scene where Deku is being chased when he saves Rodi, which is again an extremely cool segment. This has some really high quality black whip animation. Remember in the show where Deku said that black whips cannot really do everything? They can't really substitute for Sero's quirk? Well, that was a fucking lie because in this movie, Black Whip just does anything that Deku wants it to do. It can stick to anything it wants to do. Deku is basically a mixture of Superman and Spider-Man in this movie. And yeah, I mean, it looks cool. So that's all that matters. Again, a really cool shot with the CGI background where Deku is moving through the alleyway here. And with the next scene animated by Jason Yao, my mind was blown again. Again, here we get to see incredible mixing of 2D and 3D backgrounds. Remember how I said Yukina Kosuka scene is the second best storyboarded scene in the movie? This is the best storyboarded scene because this is fucking incredible. The way they mix the CGI backgrounds with the 2D foregrounds is something I've never seen in My Hero Academia before. Yes, they did a bit of it in season 5, um, but not to this extent. This is beautiful. This scene especially, it would have only been possible with a CGI background. What the fuck else are they going to do? Draw an entire fucking bridge by hand? That's not possible. It's an extremely complicated structure. You need a CGI model for it. And the way they make everything look harmonious here, this is just high quality compositing. It could also be hinting towards My Hero Academia's future where they use more CGI for the backgrounds. It's not like all the backgrounds are going to be CGI. Animators who are capable of 2D animation are just going to animate the backgrounds in 2D. But otherwise, just using CGI backgrounds can help your shots look so much more dynamic. Ufortable obviously uses this all the time. If Ufortable did not have CGI backgrounds, their shows wouldn't look nearly as good as they do. There are a bunch of cool little character acting segments after this. But the next standout sequence is by Yuki Hayashi. Yuki Hayashi is such 
a good animator. He has his own style with the way he draws character designs. It's always super angular. It looks really good. It's like he mixes Kannada style animation and Kannada poses with Yutaka Nakamura's fluid flowy animation and the end result is somehow something extremely pleasing to the eye. Here we get to see some incredible background animation and some really impressive compositing again. The 2D characters here are inside the CGI helicopter. That is some really good quality compositing because it gives a sense of depth. Again, this shot would have only been possible with CGI. How the hell are you gonna animate a helicopter frame by frame? <laughs> I mean, that's not possible, right? You challenge me, mortal. Enter Norimitsu Suzuki. He's one of the greatest veteran animators in the industry currently, alongside Yutaka Nakamura, Norio Matsumoto, Akira Matsushima, Yoshihiko Umakoshi, etc. He's not as popular as Utapon because he hasn't worked in many flashy scenes like Utapon has. And that is exactly why I like the idea of non-canon My Hero Academia movies. Because these movies allow for full creative control and allow for animators to make scenes that look like this. You are never going to get this in the TV show. I'm not using that phrase lightly and I'm not exaggerating. This is truly the single greatest scene of animation ever. And if you disagree with that, if you think something else is better, this is without a doubt, objectively, the best animated single cut of animation because this 58 second long scene has no cuts with a crazy amount of rotational shots, bagger animation to a level that I haven't seen before and everything is 2D. This 58 second clip is entirely 2D. I don't see how this is possible. I don't even think this is possible for human beings to create. Norimitsu Suzuki, I'm sure, is just advanced AI that time traveled from 2075 to our generation so that he can rekindle our spirits with 2D animation again. Because I, I don't see how a human can come up with this. I'm not going to go too in-depth with this scene for this video because this scene deserves its own video. I'm going to make an entirely separate video about this, how Norimitsu Suzuki created the best scene of animation I've ever seen. Usually when Studio Bones puts out anything new, the fanboys are always fighting, saying the Nakamura scene was the best, the Yuki Hayashi scene was the best. We saw this with My Hero Academia second movie, where a lot of very vocal fans preferred Yuki Hayashi scene over Yutaka Nakamura scene. I was not one of them because I think Nakamura scene from the second movie was that fucking incredible. People were going, of course, Yutaka Nakamura scene is the best one. The scene where Deku just pish the villain in the ass and his butt cheeks blast into cubic debris is the most incredible thing I've ever seen in animation. And we got Yuki Hashi fans saying, no, that's not true. In Yutaka Nakamura scene, things are just happening without order or control in Yuki Hayashi scene. I love the angular shape of Deku's cock and the scene where Deku shoves his knee up the enemy's ass was just really well choreographed. It reminded me of old Nakamura. Old Nakamura better than new Nakamura. For this movie, it's most of the same thing. They, they are still fighting, saying y Yuki Hayashi scene is better than Nakamura scene and the other way around. But it's not for the first spot, it's for the second spot. No one is even fighting for the first spot because yeah, everyone agrees. Norimitsu Suzuki sequence is the best scene in this movie. Yuki Hayashi scene does not compare to this. Yutaka Nakamura scene does not compare to this. Norimitsu Suzuki has created the best scene in animation history. We are in the end game of this movie now, and the end game is just basically non-stop high quality Sakuga. It begins with this skydiving segment and the grunt control segment by animators Kazuma and Yuko Dangi. I haven't heard of them before, they are probably just young animators, but they're so good. People who say 2D animation is dying have no idea what they're talking about. More and more youngsters want to become 2D animators now because they idolize people like Yutapon and Norio Matsumoto. This scene here, again, really good, with the ending scene here having a rotational shot with the CGI background and This scene by Yutaki so also really good. It gives me somewhat Nakamura vibes with the way just Deku just runs off. And of course, the somewhat cubic debris is also Nakamura inspired. Now we have some animators who worked on Fire Force. Riki Matsura, when I first saw their cut, I was blown away. It was the best scene with effects animation in Fire Force. In Fire Force. 
a show that's pretty much filled with FX animation, and still, Riki Matsuru's scene stood out to me as the best piece of FX animation in the whole show. We get a scene by Riki Matsura here where Deku just blows away a bunch of grunts and the effects here used are really good. I don't know how Riki Matsura is doing this, but it looks amazing. Another animator who's worked on Fire Force is Yuki Sato. If you're a Haikyuu fan, you are also a fan of Yuki Sato because Yuki Sato animated your favorite scene from Haikyuu to the top part 2. How do I know what your favorite scene is? Just close your eyes. Think of your favorite scene animation wise from Haikyuu to the top part 2, there's not much because Haikyuu to the top part 2 has pretty shitty animation, but one scene in particular stands out as having incredible animation. I, I know all of us are thinking about the same scene, and yeah, it is this one with Tanaka doing the cross shot, animated by Yuki Sato. And she went absolutely god mode for this movie. I'm assuming the director of the movie was like, hey Yuki, you like Bakugo, right? Yeah, I love Bakugo, I'm a big fan of Bakugo. Okay, so do you want to animate any Bakugo scenes? Yeah, sure. Which one? How about all of it? Aerial combat is just beautifully storyboarded, the background animation is amazing, the phase 1 fight has some really good tactics which is not something you'd see in a My Hero Academia fight. My Hero Academia fights in general are really dry, not very good choreography, not very well storyboarded, outside of Deku vs Bakugo part 2. That has really good storyboarding and animation and the choreography, especially the scene by Yutaka Nakamura is done really well, but the rest of the fights in the show is nothing like that, it's just BOOM! And that's the average My Hero Academia fight. Here the phase 1 of the fight is amazing and phase 2 is even better. When phase 1 ends there's this morphing animation which just looks extremely similar to the way she drew the morphing animation in Fire Force. I mean you can see it for yourself. The resemblance is uncanny and the scene itself is also pretty uncanny. Phase 2 of the fight again has some incredible storyboarding, amazing background animation, amazing choreography. Bakugo turns into Garo, fuck yes, a scene with Umakoshi Ai all of it by Yuki Sato and it looks so incredible. Just like how Yuki Sato loves Bakugo, Akigo Otsuka must also love Todoroki. They did the scene with Todoroki going plus ultra in season 5 and they also did Todoroki's climactic segment here. They are not nearly as experienced as other big name animators but were still given a climactic sequence and that's just what I love about Studio Bones. At the very foundation of the studio, it's filled with people who care about animation and Otsuko 100% rose up to the occasion. This is Otsuka's best work ever and the composite really helps it. This is the best composited scene I've seen in My Hero Academia. It reminded me a lot of the climactic sequence with Rengoku vs Akaza animated by Nozomu Abe where the composite was just perfect. The impact frames here are amazing. Again, they reminded me of Rengoku vs Akaza with Akaza's impact frames. They're not really all that similar but they're still similar enough that they reminded me of it for some reason. This sequence was amazing. Todoroki's character was finally given justice after movie 2 where he just freezes and then does nothing even though he could defrost himself using his left side but he, I guess he forgets to do that. And now we are finally getting into the final fight. Deku versus... I don't even know what the villain's name is, I'm just gonna call him Mirror Guy. So it's like ultimate offense versus ultimate defense and it's such a cool fight. It starts off with a scene by Kota Mori which also has a cut by Yuta Kiso. This is a reused animation scene from season 3 where Deku fights muscular. I don't know why they decided to use a reused clip in a movie where they spent so much time and effort to doing the animation. Maybe they just thought that no one's gonna recognize it but Japan you're, you're underestimating your audience. 
After the scene, we get a bunch of sequences by unknown artists, probably young artists, and they're again imitating Nakamura style. They're doing a really good job at it. It's really good. We then get the scene by Washio. Washio scenes are like rolling a dice. Every time he animates, it's like he's using completely different techniques, completely different styles. Here he's animating like Nakamura. So it's, I, it was either just layout animation by Washio and then corrected by Nakamura, which I don't think is likely. I just think Washio animated like Nakamura here. And it looks great. Of course, I'm not knowledgeable enough to know what I'm talking about. Maybe all of his cuts do look similar. But to me, most of his scenes don't look similar at all. They just look like they've been animated by completely different people each time. With the junior animator scene, this scene in particular stood out to me because, because the animation style here just screams, I love Nakamura. After this, we get like a montage with the other heroes. The bomb here, for some reason, just reminds me of Doom Eternal. Like the thing just looks like it's straight out of Doom Eternal. I don't know why. We get another scene here animated by Jason Yao where he shows Yao Momo's proficiency with handling a stick. And we also get some wholesome Froppy and Uraraka Sakuga. Always appreciate that. I, I really like Uraraka. She's more on the cute side than the... And now we are getting to the climax of the fight segment. This is where Studio Bones is going to throw in their big guns, Haruka Ida. Haruka Ida is not really a veteran animator, but she's so fucking good. I love her impact frames. They are so super stylized. This scene was, at the time of recording this, was just presumed as Haruka Ida. But when I first saw it, I could immediately tell it was Haruka Ida. Because the Deku impact frames here look exactly the way she animated Todoroki's impact frames from season 5 of My Hero Academia. Again, this scene looks like it's heavily inspired by Nakamura, especially this scene. This just looks like it's one-to-one -one inspired by Nakamura scene from the first movie. The camera work and debris animation really reminds me of Nakamura style. And now we are getting to what I think is the second best animated sequence in the whole movie. This is the sequence by Yuki Hayashi. Yuki Hayashi just brings that old school Nakamura feel so well. And he puts his own twist to it. As I said, these angular shaped character designs he puts the Canada poses with Nakamura style animation. And yeah, this is undoubtedly Nakamura style animation. Just the way Deku kicks here just reminds me of Nakamura scene from Concrete Revolution. And the way the crater forms, again, Nakamura style. Deku doing the cartwheel and dodging the attack reminds me of Nakamura scene from Full Metal Alchemist. Overall, I just really enjoy this segment. And the scene that comes right after this is animated by Shu Sugita. Shu Sugita in My Hero Academia just acts as the finale guy. He animates the last big moment. Unfortunately, I feel like animators who do that last big moment, they are severely restricted with how they can do the scene. Like Shusugita animated United States of Smash. It looked incredible. He added a bunch of line work, a lot of amazing effects. But at the end of the day, it is still the main guy punching the villain really, really hard. Also the same with the second movie. Amazing line work, amazing effects, but just comes down to the main guy hitting the villain really hard. Here, he was not used at the finale guy. And we really see some another side of Shusugita's animation because he's very capable. If you watch the Maiden Abyss movie, you can see how good he's at animating if he's given creative control. And here we see this aerial back and forth between Deku and the mirror guy. And it's super satisfying to watch. Reminds me of the back and forth between Naruto and Sasuke in Shippuden's final fight, but a much more chaotic version of that fight. And where there are disciples, there's the master. We finally get to Yutaka Nakamura scene. When I was first watching it, I thought the entire portion was animated by Yutaka Nakamura, especially the Yuki Hayashi scene. I thought for sure that was animated by Nakamura. Well, I was clearly wrong because Nakamura is way past that type of animation. As I said, he keeps evolving, always tries something new, and here he's just I don't even know what he's trying. This scene by Nakamura can be summarized as Deku was his overhaul, but Deku's overdosing on LSD and maybe also Utapon while he was animating this because this is just a meme scene. I just burst into uncontrollable laughter when I first saw this. I don't think that was the intention when the scene was created, but that, that's just how it was. It, it was hilarious. It looked goofy. Now coming to the quality of the animation itself, we see some 3D backgrounds. Yutaka Nakamura, 3D background. This is the 
first time Nakamura has ever unironically used a 3D background. I say unironically because, because he animated a scene in Shirabako with a 3D background, but that was just on purpose, a stylistic choice. Shirabako is about creating anime, so it was just anime within an anime. It was animeception. So it was a stylistic choice to use a 3D background with Nakamura's 2D animation in that movie. But here, they're using a 3D background for the sake of using a 3D background. I don't know why they did that. Maybe Nakamura wanted to try something different, but I really don't see why Nakamura has to use 3D backgrounds here. Yes, Nozomu Abe uses 3D backgrounds, but that's just the way Ufotable does things. And I've never really seen Nozomu Abe work well with 2D backgrounds anyway, while Nakamura is a master of 2D background animation. But it definitely wasn't just an afterthought here, because in this scene, you can see the 3D background animation is mixed with 2D background animation, or at least there's some sort of 2D shading on top of the 3D background to make it look like 2D. I don't know what they're doing here. Again, they're maybe just experimenting for season six. But so overall, how does this Nakamura scene look? It just looks like a classic Nakamura scene. The sense of speed that Nakamura conveys is still there. It looks super flashy. There are amazing impact frames. But outside of the 3D implementations, it doesn't really look like Nakamura's experimenting with this one. He's not really trying to create anything unique this time, like he did with the season five, the Ida sequence. It was super unique. Here, it was just more of what we've seen from Nakamura. Of course, that's not a bad thing. He is the best action animator of all time. So anything from him would just look amazing. And yeah, this looks amazing. But I do think the Norimitsu Suzuki sequence and the Yuki Hashi sequence beat this one. I do like both of them more than this one. And this scene again goes to show just how influential Yutaka Nakamura is. The scene that came right before his cut and the scene that came right after his sequence are both animated by different animators. And it's so similar to his style that it just flows seamlessly. The scene that comes before his is animated by Osamu Murata. Murata uses some pretty cool impact frames here and the same jagged lines that Nakamura uses. And the scene that comes after this, that is truly impressive. It's animated by Michael Sung, so he's not a Japanese animator. Again, goes to show just how influential Nakamura is. His influence goes way beyond just Japan. It's pretty much the entire world of 2D animators that he's inspiring and influencing. And Michael Sung's scene here, it flows so seamlessly with Nakamura that it just looks like it was animated by him. You'll barely be able to tell where the Nakamura scene ends and where the Michael Sung scene starts. And that's pretty much it. That's the entire movie. What an incredible movie. Truly a masterpiece of animation with the single best sequence of 2D animation I've ever seen being the Norimitsu Suzuki scene. Video about the full breakdown of the Norimitsu Suzuki scene is gonna come pretty soon. Should be coming right after this one. And yeah, if you enjoyed my animation breakdown for this movie, leave a like. If you liked it a lot, subscribe because I'll be making more of these videos. If you did not like it, then leave a comment telling me how I can improve. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for the views.